Jesus. In today's program, we're going to have a look at the love of God. God is love, the Bible tells us. Let's have a look at what the Bible says about love. Let's get to the heart of the matter. God says that he loves people that come to him in humility with a, a humble and a contrite heart, knowing of their own sin and their own need of him. God loves people to recognise that they need him for his salvation because God is love. All that God does is out of love, even the Ten Commandments. But God gave the commandments, their law, because they are for our benefit, not for his. God is not selfish, God is loving. The Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So God wants us to enjoy the benefits of living for him and in him, because he is the life giver, he gives us breath, he gives us eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to understand, mouths to speak. And he gives us breath to praise him and honour him, glorify him and point others towards him. Because God, before he even made the world, the universe, everything that is around us, he was a God of love. He was in constant fellowship with his son Jesus Christ and with the Holy Spirit that they work together to create this universe that we live in and they constantly maintain and keep it going. It's constantly expanding. We have to be grateful to God for all his creation and not just the outer creation of the universe, sunset, sunrise and, and a lot of the beautiful things that we see in this world, in nature, but we also see it in, in our fellow human beings that though they are made in the same way as us, everybody is different. Everyone has their own fingerprint. Everyone is made by God, obviously through the biological process, but we are made his image to serve him and give praise and honour to him and to enjoy fellowship with God. I want to read this verse from the Amplified Bible. And what does it say about the heart? The heart is deceitful above all things and it is exceedingly perverse and corrupt and severely mentally sick. Who can know it, perceive, understand, be acquainted with his own heart and mind. Now, that sounds not harsh. It sounds that God is having a go at us, but it is because we are born in sin. From Adam's sin in the garden, we are corrupt because of that sin nature that we took on from the temptation and we felt. Since then, we've all been the same. We are all sinners in need of a saviour because God provided a redemption. God promised the seed of redemption from that moment when Adam and Eve sinned. When we go through the Old Testament, we see traces of this redemptive line coming up, right up to Jesus Christ. God addresses us as a corrupt people. Even before he destroyed the earth with the flood, he only saved Noah, his three sons and their wives, and his own wife, and all the animals, a pair of each, clean animal, to go into the ark to be saved from this flood that destroyed all the world at that time. When he was about to do that, he, God said, man is exceedingly wicked and corrupt because they had lost the love for each other. They were hateful, they were warring and fighting with each other. And it's the same today. We see it on the news every day. So as somebody go how they go at someone else. Even on social media we see it all the time. At the same time people are saying how much they love this, love that. There's a lot of pretension goes on. They can pretend to love somebody 
but beyond that they be saying awful things about them. Hypocrisy is part of the sin because we have that fallen nature and we pretend to love and sometimes it is from the heart and God wants it to be from the heart but sometimes it's a defence mechanism, sometimes it's a, it's a mask we wear. The word hypocrisy comes from early Greek theatre where they would wear a mask that to be a different character but underneath they had another character saying one thing and doing another but God is not like that God doesn't wear need to wear a mask God is pure and he is love all that he does is in love for his creation for us and he wants to draw us to himself and he's done that through Jesus Christ who became a man living a life of perfection, a sinless perfection, so that he could be a sacrifice to atone for the sins of the world. That includes you. And I hope that you are a Christian. And if not, you can contact me and find out how you can become a Christian. And there's a little animation in the video that shows you how to pray a simple prayer. But God wants you in his kingdom. God doesn't desire anyone to perish but all to come to repentance and, and know him as their Lord and Saviour and that is how we enter into eternity and if you reject the Son you, become, you, are, you are under the wrath of God which is upon the whole world. God don't want you to have a heart that is deceitful and wicked and selfish and proud and antagonistic against other people. God wants you to love with a pure heart and a clean heart, but also to speak the truth. If I love you enough, I will tell you the truth. If you are in danger, I will tell you. If I didn't tell you, I, would, I don't love you. If you're driving on a road and there's a cliff at the end of it, and I don't tell you, I don't love you because I'm thinking, I don't, I don't want to offend him or disturb him. You might not listen to me. It's in our job. To one, and you may be in a different religion, you may be in a cult, you may be in a group of sincere believers who believe sincerely believe in things, but you can be sincerely wrong. The Bible is clear that the Bible is an eternal word. Jesus Christ is that eternal word. He became flesh and dwelt among us so we can know the truth, truth that would set us free. The Bible tells us also to examine ourselves and to look to God. To let, If we read the Bible and let it read us, it will show us how we can examine ourselves, look at our hearts, our minds, our attitudes, not only generally, but each and every day. Because we all slip up in thought, word and deed. So we can always turn to him and look to him for guidance, for help strength and we can repent continually but we could also pray continually pray without ceasing the Bible says and we can also endeavour to trust God with everything to give our hearts and minds that we're not carrying around any burdens or worrying about things Jesus said don't worry worry about anything Jesus said cast your worries upon him because God wants us let him be in charge of our lives because only by his spirit that we can live a true life of godliness so we've had a good look at the heart today i'm sure that in future we will have another look we need to know theology is the knowledge of god what god says about us what god says about himself and we need to know these things so that we don't go into error but we know exactly what God says about himself what God says about us what God says about sin because he wants us to be have a solid foundation and we can only have that solid foundation if we get into the word of God and study it and read it and let it read us and let it feed us because the Bible is spiritual food it's not just a book like any other book. It's spiritual food and a message from God and we can glean so much from it every day, something new every day. 
and you can look a verse, look at a verse one day and then look at it another day and you can see completely different things because God is continually speaking to us. It's a rhema word, it's a living word. Jesus is the word, it's called Logos. It's also a living word, it's a eternal word, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a word of God. So we can trust what God says in the Bible about anything. We can enjoy the wisdom of other people, but always, always compare it with what God says. God is the final authority on all things. Well, that's it for today's message, and I hope you've got a lot out of it, and we'll see you again soon. Bye, take care. Thank you.